So I guess the question for today is whether or not primers are sensitive to temperature. And if they are, is there one brand that's better than another? So I loaded up some ammo and I took 80 shots. 30 shots were in 223 with the CCI 450, the Federal GM 205M, and the Remington 7.5. For large rifle primers, I used 308 and loaded the CCI 200, the Federal GM 210M, and the Winchester WLR. For large Magnum rifle, I used 300 Winchester Magnum and tested the CCI 250 and the Federal GM 215M. So there are a lot more primers to test, but I thought 80 shots would give us some idea of what's going on. So for 223 and 308, I used a Alliant AR Comp. Just a couple weeks ago in a video, we tested this powder for temperature sensitivity and it performed really well, very small changes. And what we found is that the velocity actually goes down with AR comp as the temperature goes up. A little bit strange, but it performed really well. So I wanted to use it in this video for, for 223 and 308. For the 300 Winchester Magnum, I used Hodgton H4831SC. This is one of Hodgton's extreme powders which is the line of their powders that's supposed to be less sensitive to temperature changes. And I went back to one of my previous videos and we had a really good SD number with this powder and the 168 grain Sierra tipped match King. So these are what I shot in the 300 Winchester Magnum. The bullet for 308 was the 175 grain Sierra match King and the bullet for 223 was the 75 grain Hornady match boat tail hollow point. Now I primarily shoot Federal and CCI primers, so I wanted one of each in each test, and that meant excluding a lot of primers that I shoot a lot of, like the CCI 41, but that's okay. So my test setup changed a little bit from the video a couple weeks ago. I'm shooting two temperatures. Last video I did three, but taking it down to two. So the cold test is still at 32 degrees, and the hot test is at 150 degrees. So I've got these little electric lunchbox type of things. I've got some of these for monitoring and controlling temperature. And my biggest change from the last time is that I'm not, no longer using water. So for the, for the cold test in the last video, I used plastic bags. I put the rounds in plastic bags and then just put them into ice water. But I decided to switch over and just start using some of these things. And for the thermocouple on my temperature monitor, I put an empty case over top of it, and I try to situate that near the center and, and keep an eye on temperature. Hasn't been any problem. This setup performed just as good as last time, and it was a little bit easier to deal with. So let me show you the first chart and see if I can make the test make sense. I took five shots cold. The 32 degrees shots are on the left side of the chart and the 150 degree shots are on the right hand side of the chart. So I took five at each temperature and we're just looking for velocity change. You'll see here with the CCI 450, it was pretty much perfect. The cold average and the hot average were only one feet per second different from one another. So you see up there, I've got one feet per second average change. So now let's bring in the second chart, which were still small rifle primers. This is the Federal GM 205M. Same load, 21.0 grains of AR comp, same bullet, and we pretty much got the same result. An almost horizontal line and seven feet per second of velocity change. And if you'll notice at 150 degrees, our dots are spread out, right? So we had a, a larger extreme spread with that group, which might've caused a little bit of inaccuracy in our trend line, but it doesn't matter. Like these are both really, really good, right? A horizontal line is perfect. We don't want any change from hot to cold. So I would call both of these outstanding. Now let's bring in the third one for small rifle primers. This was the Remington seven and a half. You'll see with this one, we dropped 31 feet per second and the velocities were grouped pretty tightly. It's not like they're spread out a bunch. We had a lot of extreme spread. Maybe we had one or two shots that were just weird and obviously messed up. Like I don't think that happened here. So I can't help but look at these three and think, that that Remington seven and a half might just be a little bit more sensitive. It's not much, these numbers aren't crazy. If we go back to that last video on this topic where we were testing AR comp, we were using the CCI 41 primer. And in this same test, we had a difference of 42 feet per second. 
So while this, this Remington seven and a half chart might look pretty bad at first, at first glance, I think it's still pretty decent performance. So I don't know if I have, I managed to fit all three of these on the screen. If so, let's immediately just switch to all of the large rifle charts. So the CCI 200, the GM 210M and the Winchester WLR. Not much to talk about here, right? Two feet per second change with the CCI, four feet per second with the Federal and eight feet per second with the Winchester. So these all look perfect. Now it's okay, you'll notice the CCI 200 is about 50 feet per second slower. Like, you know, it, it's horizontal line is a little bit lower, but we don't care. On another day, that might be important to us, but for today, it's just how steep is the trend line compared to one another. So these all look outstanding. Now, one thing I'll say is like, so the CCI 200 is not twice as good as the Federal or four times as good as the Winchester. These are only five shot averages. So I think today and, you know, moving forward, because that's the plan is I want to start testing more powders, but I wanted to get a feel for what effect the primers were having. But yeah, as we go through more and more powders and see more and more good powders and more and more bad powders, we'll get a better feel for what good and bad looks like, I think. If you ask me, taking all six of these charts for AR comp, plus the additional information we gathered in the last video on this topic, like AR comp is awesome. These numbers are outstanding, but I don't know that we're gonna be able to kind of score these. Cause you know, if we were testing AR comp, would we call it a two, a four or an eight or a 31? That's just not gonna work. So I think these are always just kind of gonna need a little bit of an eyeball test where you sit back and look at it and say, yeah, man, ooh, this is a good powder. Or maybe we'll give them a completely opinion-based rating, like a star rating. Like AR comp, five star powder, doesn't get much better. Extremely stable across temperatures. Okay, let's move on to the large rifle Magnum primers. Things get a little bit more interesting here because H4831SC is clearly not as temperature stable as AR comp. But even saying that is kind of a dumb thing to say, right? Because, so this H4831SC charge weight of 77 grains is a much different thing than the little 21 grain charge weight we were shooting in 223. So is the temperature swing proportional to charge weight? The more powder you use, the more your temperature is gonna swing? Is it a fixed thing based on velocity? So for every five degrees, you're gonna get 0.25% increased velocity. I, I don't know. And I don't know that we'll ever get to the point where we've got enough data to even figure that out, but we're a long way from it right now. So yeah, back to these two charts, the CCI 250 changed by 88 feet per second and the GM 215M changed by 42 feet per second. Now, unfortunately the velocities weren't quite as tight as I was hoping for, right? We got some spread, our little dots are spread out. So our certainty about these numbers should be approached with caution, but I still think the charts tell us what we need to know kind of like back to what I was talking about earlier. So here we got the CCI with 88 and the GM 215M with 42. Is the CCI always going to be twice as bad? No, I can't imagine it would be, but it's hard. It's hard to argue that the GM 215M doesn't just look better. Like it just looks better, significantly flatter. So as far as I know, this is the first time I've done any temperature testing with H4831 SC. And if we were doing the star ratings, I wouldn't know what to give this. It's certainly not a five star, right? I mean, this is a significant amount of velocity swing across temperature. So once we have some more to compare it to, maybe it's a three star. I can tell you it's not that bad because if we go back to data collected previously, like here's Alliant Power Pro 2000 MR that we tested in 223 and we had 150 feet per second of swing. So I'm not too worried about H4831SC. It, I, it's going to look better and better the more powders we test and the more examples of bad that we get. I think it just looks bad in today's test because it's up against AR comp, which has just been really impressive, both you know this video and the previous video. The numbers just look great. One thing I wanna try with AR comp, which um, Alliant Reloader TS 15.5 was the same way, I'm pretty sure, where this velocity is, is actually dropping a little bit as the temperature goes up. So what happens if we keep going colder? So eventually I'd like to try some AR comp at 
zero degrees or even colder. Maybe I'll get some dry ice and go really crazy. Because I'm just curious if that trend continues because it's really weird. Can't wait to find out if that shows up in more powders, you know, as we test more and more. So I think that's pretty much it. I'm a little bit surprised by today's results. I didn't really expect much change, but all of that comes from just the two charts, you know, the Remington seven and a half chart and maybe the CCI 250 chart. It may all just come down to sample size. It just might be that five shot groups are not going to be enough to really nail down direct head to head comparisons. And I'm okay with that. Like I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Whether or not AR comp is more or less sensitive than Varget, I don't think we'll be answering that with confidence, but hopefully our test can at least classify that both of those are good powders. You know what I'm saying? Good, mediocre, and bad. If we could come out of some of this powder testing, just being able to classify them in those three, that would be fine. Like in the last video, you know, Power Pro 2000 MR, we expected it to be temperature sensitive just because it's, it's a ball powder. Most of them are sensitive. As far as I know, we're going to test. So we expected it to be bad. We observed that it was bad. And the next time I use it, I'll have that in mind, right? Just want to know, you know, when do I need to be careful working up a load in the winter or something like that? Okay, so I'm rambling and losing track of what I'm talking about. So I think that's a good time to wrap this up. I think what I'm going to try and do is pick a primer and stick with it. Because, you know, back to our AR comp versus Varget test, if I use different primers and I remember back to the results of today's video, I'm going to be, I'm going to be questioning it a little bit, right? So the best way to keep these things consistent is going to be to use the same primer. And I'll, I'll probably just look and see what I have the most of, which is, which is going to be a federal or a CCI probably across everything. And we'll just use those. I'll tell you what, I'll run a poll. I haven't run a poll in a while. Assuming I have enough to have some choices, would you guys rather I used CCI primers or federal primers for the powder testing? So I think that's it. Are primers sensitive to temperature? Maybe a little, maybe certain circumstances, but it doesn't seem like anything too drastic, I guess. All right, thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.